David Solomonoff, the president of the Internet Society of New York, and we're here today at the Circumvention Tools Hackfest at the Columbia Law School with Eva Galperin of the Electron Electronic Frontier Foundation. And you're a blogger, and you're also working on the HTTPS Everywhere project. Is yes, yes, I am. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what do you do in terms of the blogging? Uh, can you tell um, us about that? Well, uh, I am the International Freedom of Expression uh, Coordinator for the mm -hmm. Electronic Frontier okay. Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I spend a lot of time covering uh, privacy and security issues mm -hmm. because the greatest threats to freedom of expression mm -hmm. um, on online right now largely uh, have to do with uh, internet privacy and security mm -hmm. and uh, sort of... Uh, authoritarian regimes and, uh, and non-authoritarian regimes trying to, uh, trying to intercept traffic right. um, or, to, uh, or to read people's traffic. Right. Uh, so I mostly blog about these issues. Uh -huh. um, primarily right now a lot of my work is being done on uh, pro-Syrian government hackers who are writing malware uh, targeting Syrian activists. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've been finding this malware, reverse engineering it, and then writing up uh, blog posts that uh, explain to Syrian activists uh, how to find this malware and how to remove it from their computers. Mm -hmm. Right. Is that malware being dis disseminated outside of Syria as well? Um, uh, yes, it's being uh, disseminated all over the world, but it's specifically targeted at Syrian uh -huh, activists. Right, right. Uh, the thing about uh, malware is it's like any other type of software that it can be reverse engineered or, or made open source. There are plenty of you know, uh, and it can evolve uh, out in the wild and, and end up a lot of different kinds of places too. So that's certainly a, an issue there. Right, and okay, can you tell us about HTTPS everywhere? Uh, well, uh, one of the um, most useful things that people can do in order to prevent uh, their traffic from being snooped on is to uh, browse the web using HTTPS rather right. than HTTP. Right. Uh, the S stands for secure, secure. Uh, and uh, it encrypts your traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is that uh, many websites implement HTTPS but do not always implement it in, in sort of in a way um, Sometimes they use some other server. You know, there, there are many different sort of ways in which. Uh, well, they may not advertise the fact. Yeah. That they may they, not advertise yeah. it. Yeah. They may not use it by default. Right. Um, and so uh, EFF has created this uh, browser extension, which works in uh, Chrome and Firefox, mm -hmm. uh, which will uh, automatically uh, cause your uh, cause the website to use HTTPS if there if is a available. if there is a rule right. that has been written for it. Mm -hmm. um, many many sites such as uh, Twitter and Facebook and uh, Gmail all use uh, HTTPS by default now, which is right. really quite wonderful. Um, but when we when we first wrote this, this was not the case, right. uh, and there are still many sites that uh, that don't support HTTPS mm -hmm. by default. Right. Are there countries where uh, the government prevents uh, a, uh, a web service or a website from using HTTPS or? Or you need, would need to use like a proxy or something of that sort to to access them. In order to use HTTPS, yeah, but, uh, for, or or for specific sites, that type of thing. Um, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been situations in which countries, uh, in which authoritarian regimes facing civil unrest, have temporarily blocked uh, HTTPS traffic and right. all mm -hmm. SSL traffic. Right. But right. that is a very controversial move because the moment you do that, all of your online um, banking, financial right. and right. banking transactions right. grind to a halt. Right. Right. Uh, so the, the cost of engaging in that kind of behavior is very high and mm -hmm. uh, no, um, no regime has done this for very long. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. All right. What else would you like to tell us today? What um, message do we have, do you have for the Internet Society? <laughs> Well, um, I've, I've been spending a lot of time uh, talking to the people who develop uh, privacy and security tools, mm -hmm. uh, sort of about their, their philosophy of development. And uh, I think that there are a couple of very Im important takeaways that we have yeah, uh, okay. from, from this meeting. Uh, the first is that tools absolutely need to be simpler. Uh, as, as developers, it's very easy to sort of get involved in the minutia and right. not worry about the, the user interface. Right. Um, but ordinary people have to be able to use these tools. Mm -hmm. if if ordinary people cannot use them, then you haven't really created privacy and security for everyone. You've just created privacy and security for, for yourself, the elites who right, know how to use right, the tools. Right. Um, so I think that that's especially important. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I encourage uh, people who are developing privacy and security tools to please develop, uh, keeping in mind that most people in authoritarian regimes are running um, 
old pirated software. They're mm -hmm. running uh, copies of Windows pirated 99. copies of, <laughs> of uh, Windows 7 and Vista. Yeah. Uh, and if their software is not uh, effective on these platforms, then it's not very useful uh, to the people who need it most. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think that those are, are really the, the most important takeaways here. Right. Okay. And uh, the uh, URL for your blog? Um, you can uh, read all about the Electronic Frontier Foundation uh, by going to www.eff.org. Uh -huh. right, and that's where your, your blog is? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Well, thanks very much. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.